Mặt chấm một chim hai con. The dinosaurs next door. Written by Harriet Castor. Illustrated by Terry Gore. This book is about a scientist who raised a dinosaur and a child who lived next door. I could imagine something interesting while reading this book. What if I met a dinosaur? If I were a scientist, what could I invent? I hope that friends who heard this book laugh like me. Chapter One, Mr. Puff. Mr. Puff lived in a tall blue house. Outside, it looks a little odd. Inside, it was even stranger. Mr. Puff was an inventor. His whole house was crammed with amazing inventions. His latest invention moved him from place to place in an instant. Before that, he invented a robot to clean up spills, and before that, he invented a really cup, but it spilled most of his tea, which was why he invented the robot. His new project wasn't an invention at all, but it was so exciting he had asked Sam, his friend from next door, to see it. Sam had promised to come over after school. Chapter two: The eggs. At last, come in. When Sam arrived, Mr. Puff was bursting with excitement. They have to be kept in the dark until the last moment. He led Sam to his study and dived under a table. With a smile, Mr. Puff came out with a bag. Eggs," said Sam, looking at the four big eggs. "These aren't just any old egg," said Mr. Puff. "They're dinosaur eggs." "What?" cried Sam. "But the dinosaurs died out zillions of years ago. How? Where?" Mr. Puff looked mysterious. Oh, they were to pay me for an invention, he said. Just then, the blue spotted egg began to giggle and jump and bump in the basket. A crack appeared, zigzagging along the shelf. Then another, and another, until finally a little grin had burst out. Wow! Said Sam. The creature started at Sam. Sam started back. Isn't it wonderful? Said Mr. Puff. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic. But it is a dinosaur. Said Sam. Was it possible? Did it look like a dinosaur? As they watch it, the other eggs begin to giggle and jump and bump in the basket. Their shells shatter. The eggs have hatched. The baby dinosaurs were very lively. They look around, making excited squeaks. I expected they're hungry," said Mr. Puff. Hmm. What do dinosaurs eat? Let me go home for my dinosaur book," said Sam, and raced off. Soon he was back. That one looks like ours," said Sam. He pointed to a blue dinosaur with red spikes on its head. That one eats meat, then," said Mr. Puff. But some dinosaurs only eat plants. They weren't sure what sort of dinosaurs the others were. So Sam put out a large plate of cat food and a large plate of salad, just in case. 
It's my dinner time too," said Sam. "I have to go, but I'll be back. I must be the only person with dinosaurs next door." Chapter three, bigger and bigger. Over the next three days, Mr. Puff watched the dinosaurs. He watched them grow and grow and grow. By the four, he had to invent an extra long ruler to measure them all. By the fifth day, he was worried. They're getting fierce. They just keep growing. He told Sam. Can you invent something to stop them? Sam asked. That it! cried Mr. Puff. He ran up to his dark, dusty attic and came back with a silver box on wheels. A yellow hose sat coiled like a snake on top. What is it? asked Sam. This is my size old machine," Mr. Puff said proudly. "It makes things shrink or grow." "Perfect," said Sam. "Does it work?" "Of course it works," said Mr. Puff. "Ready, steady, fire!" Chapter Four. Kaboom! Oops! <laughs> It's huge. Oh dear," said Mr. Puff. "Something must be wrong." He peered inside the machine. "Ah," he said, "I had my wires crossed." For now, Sam. Sam picked up the hose. "Ready, steady, fire!" said Mr. Puff. Kaboom! The dinosaur vanished. Where has it gone? asked Mr. Puff. Did I shrink it too much? Sam looked down the hose. Careful," said Mr. Puff. "I don't want you shrinking too." They shrank one dinosaur in the kitchen. Another was outside having a snack. Ready, steady, fire!" said Mr. Puff. But where was the last dinosaur? Just then, they heard a cry from the bathroom. Ready, steady, fire! Said Mr. Puff. But as Sam took aim, he slipped. The horse flew from his hand. Kaboom! Chapter Five. Strength. Fantastic! It worked on people too. Mr. Puff said, "Starry smoke filled the room. When it cleared, Sam was in shock. He was smaller than the bottle of bath oil. It shrunk us as well as the dinosaur." Began Sam. He heard a roar behind him. I don't think it wants you to brush your teeth. If we could just distract him. Suddenly, the dinosaur looked at the door. Sam and Mr. Puff died for a cover. The dinosaur should have hidden too. Mrs. Puff's cat was coming. She took one look at the dinosaur and chased it away. I always said she was a clever cat. Quick, said Mr. Puff. We must. Change to our normal size before that dinosaur comes back. First, they had to move the dial. Sam pushed. Mr. Puff pulled. It was hard work. Then they dragged the hose into place. By now, they were exhausted. <coughs> Everything is hard when you're this small. Sam panted. Cheer up," said Mr. Puff. "We just have to turn it on." But they couldn't shift the lever. "I hope we don't break it," said Sam. Mr. Puff didn't have any proof to say anything. They climbed off the machine. 
What were they going to do? Chapter 6 Cat to the Rescue! Just then, the cat jumped up onto the Sizo machine. The lever moved. Kaboom! Clouds of smoke filled the room. Sam and Mr. Pop started to grow and grow and grow. They were back to normal at last. Yay! Now, what are those dinosaurs up to? said Mr. Puff. The dinosaurs were running all over the house. Sam tried to help catch them. The dinosaurs thought it was a game. Got you, cried Mr. Puff as he scooped up the blue dinosaur. You, they're worse than puppies. What I am going to do with them? Thinking of puppies gave Sam an idea. If you can train dogs, why not dinosaurs? Brilliant, said Mr. Puff. And then maybe you'd like one as a pet. They're very sweet. Thank you, Sam said, but I'd rather just visit them sometimes. I think I prefer my dinosaurs in books. Sam never told anyone about the dinosaurs next door or his narrow escape. But whenever he saw Mr. Poop's cat, he always took out a saucer of milk to thank her. The end.